loving me I loving you Mothers and fathers Husbands and wives Sisters and brothers Friends for life Won't live in the past All I wanna do now Is making it last How do you think you handle conflict? Do you think you handle it in the best way possible? Welcome to Make It Last Podcast. I'm your host, Noreen Daly, and this time around, we're talking about conflict resolution. What is conflict resolution and how can your style impact your relationships? And to do that, we have speaker, author, expert in conflict resolution and expert in having those difficult conversations that sometimes some of us shy away from having. Charmaine Hammond, welcome. Thank you so much. I'm really looking forward to this conversation because conflict is something a lot of people would just rather avoid. <laughs> All right. So I just said that, but before we get into the the topic for this mm-hmm. time around, just a lot of people, I, I, I don't want to sound like, use the term expert a lot. So if right. somebody's listening, why is it that you would say that you're then an expert in this particular area? conflict Mm. resolution. Give us a little bit about your background with this topic. That's a great question. Well, I started out my career working in jails. I was a correctional officer, so (laughs) lots of conflict in the the jail system. And then I went back to school and got trained as a mediator and Mm -hmm. was mediating conflicts in families, communicates, Uh, communities and workplaces. And then I went back and got a master's degree in conflict analysis and management. So it's an area I've been working in since the late 80s. Okay, so both professionally, you actually got academic training in it. Absolutely. Okay, okay. So with that being said, what is conflict resolution? Well, conflict resolution and the way that I have worked with it is when you can take diverse opinions and miscommunication and people who have not been able to effectively communicate, and often it has resulted in a lot of drama, damaged relationships, and broken trust. And when you can take all those and Mm -hmm. bring people together in a safe, respectful conversation, and they can actually create an outcome, a solution, or a resolution that they can live with. And one of the things that when I was a practicing mediator for more than 10 years, and I facilitated thousands of people through Mm -hmm. hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of cases, Mm -hmm. the one piece that I learned about conflict resolution is that there's one thing to address the issue or solve it. But then there's a next level, which is how do we make sure that the relationship is restored? or (laughs) sustained (laughs) because sometimes in the process of how people address and resolve conflict, the relationship and the trust gets impacted. Oh, a lot of times in relationships and regardless of the type of relationship, whether it's a professional or personal relationship, once people hear the word conflict, it, 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 okay. Their hairs literally sometimes go on end, you know, so how (laughs) then can you then get to the point where you're actually comfortable to address an issue that you might be having with somebody? Yeah, you've just present something so important because when you said the hairs go up, that's exactly how I've had people describe it. People are, um, you know, conflict is not something that the most of us want to deal with. And years ago, I decided to call it something different. So when I was mediating and when I was working closely, uh, facilitating conflict resolution, I decided to call it courageous dialogue instead Mm. of conflict resolution because conflict happens all the time we have conflict within ourselves value disagreements in our own head about right you know this decision or that decision we have conflict with other people we have conflict within systems so it's a part of our life and then i thought what if we were to reframe it where it isn't scary or negative it's simply a conversation or a dialogue that requires some courage and when i started calling it courageous dialogue People showed up differently in the conversation. I'm, I, it was mind changing for mm-hmm. me to witness. People came in feeling more confident or maybe being a little more careful about how they put their opinion across. So it, it, conflict resolution for a lot of people uh, feels like a fight, a win-lose um, scenario. 
And courageous dialogue just seems to paint the picture of this is a conversation that's going to take some mm. courage, but we can get through it. Okay. One of the things that you said earlier is the whole idea that you address the issue, but then you also try to ensure that the relationship yeah. remains intact. How difficult is that? And, and is it something that you realize that depending on the type of relationship, you might have to handle it differently? How does that work? Yes, there, there's so many levels of complexity when you bring in relationships. So sometimes there are relationships that when the conflict is addressed, everything just gets back on track. There, it's almost as if there was no issue. Then there's some of those more complicated uh, relationship and conflicts where it will take some work, it will take some energy and commitment on both people's uh, behalfs to actually improve the relationship. Sometimes people actually agree they don't want to continue having the relationship. Mm -hmm. They simply want the conflict resolved. And honestly, there's a higher level, which is the relationship is so deeply damaged and eroded uh, trust that it will take a lot of work and commitment. But part of what can start that hard work and commitment is the fact that the people that were involved in the conflict got through it together. They figured uh -huh. out a solution. And if it's mm -hmm. a team conflict, often if the conflict has caused dissension in the team or it's kind of built camps where people are picking their sides, often we need to do some team building to help the team now work together cooperatively after the conflict is resolved. I know you've been enjoying the conversation, but we're going to take a little break and get a word from our sponsor. Are you struggling to become an effective communicator? Let Noreen Daly, the communication specialist, get you there. Services include communications consultancy, one-on-one -on -one coaching, public speaking and debate training, leadership and team building sessions, plus much more. Visit NoreenDaily.com for more info. Noreen Daly, redefining the way you communicate. You, you said earlier that it could take work. There are a lot of persons who have the mindset that the fact that if this is a relationship, whichever type of relationship, it shouldn't be hard. And if it is that is if it, if it is that it is too hard, maybe it is a relationship that I don't need to be in. Yeah, that's a great <laughs> that's a great way to reframe it. Absolutely, mm -hmm. and and I love that because we really need to look at what are the what there's so many different levels of relationships and reasons why we have relationships. And so sometimes the outcome might be, and I've seen this a lot in workplaces. After an agreement is uh, created with the people in conflict, often the conversation is more like, how are we going to continue working together um, in a way that we're respectful, uh, you know, there, we can handle issues if they crop up, but they're not going to go away and be best friends and be mm -hmm. going out for dinner together. And that's okay. Uh, there's a challenge that happens. Sometimes people expect that when a conflict is done, everybody come, becomes best friends. And if that wasn't the case before the conflict, it probably doesn't need to be the case after the resolution. Yeah. So we've been talking a lot about what it is. Now, how can your style impact your relationship, somebody's particular style? And if so, what are those different styles, mm. conflict styles? That is a fantastic question because a lot of us don't realize that there are different, I'm going to call them predominant uh, conflict resolution styles. There's a great inventory uh, by two individuals, Thomas Kilman, and it's called the Thomas Kilman Conflict Instrument. And mm -hmm. he, they actually decide, they define several ways that people respond or deal with conflict. One of them is an avoidance style. So that style is the person who generally avoids conflict, um, even if it needs to be addressed, they just avoid it. So it's not like delaying, they clearly avoid. That can be a challenge because in relationships, whether mm -hmm. they're family or workplace, when there's an issue and one person is refusing to deal with it, it's really hard to get an outcome. <laughs> so avoidance is one. The other one is the complete opposite of avoidance. And that's the sort of combative um, approach where you have a very competitive approach is what I would call that. The challenge with this style is that it often sets a conversation up to be having a winner or a loser. loser. The competitive mm -hmm. style, um, they never want the backstory. So you'll often see with this, with this style, as somebody is talking, the person who's a competitive style of conflict will say, just get to the point. 
and they'll be moving their hands, like pick up the pace here, get to the point, don't need mm -hmm. the backstory. But often you need the backstory to get to the solution story. So there's those two styles. Then we have what's called the, um, the accommodator. The accommodation style is when we often give in to somebody else's needs or proposed solution just to have peace. Now, it, it works great when you don't really care what the outcome is. And there's lots of times we have a, a disagreement. And we say, I really don't care if it's A or B. Um, I, I can live with both. Then accommodation is a great style. But when you feel like you are always giving in to somebody else, it creates resentment and a whole bunch of other issues. So that's so far we've got avoidance, competitor, or um, and then we've got yep, and then we've got the accommodation style. Next we have the compromise style, and this is kind of the split it down the middle, 50-50. Uh, you go your way, I'll go my way. One of the challenges I see here is um, that people often try and compromise too early in a conversation. It, it, mainly to get out of the conversation. So often mm -hmm. they end up having to revisit the whole thing all over again. It's important just if you find yourself compromising, um, just do a little check to see if you talked about this a little further, could there actually be a solution that addresses mm -hmm. all parties? And then the last one um, is what we call the collaborative style. And this is the style where it does take longer to have these conversations in this way. It's, it's very collaborative. It's cooperative. It's where the parties really work hard to discuss the issues and work towards mutually satisfactory outcomes, but it does take time. And um, a lot of times that's why people try and compromise or sort of drive the solution. We all have a predominant style that we tend to fall into. And what can really help in conflict resolution is looking at Sometimes we need to flex our style. So, for example, if I were the competitive style, like combative style of conflict resolution, mm -hmm. and I'm going to approach somebody who tends to be an avoidance style, that's not going to work <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> because that person is just going to avoid me even more if I use the competitive style. So I might want to flex and say, maybe I need to be more collaborative here and engaging. Yeah. So when you can flex your style – you can actually advance the conversation and relationship. I know you've been enjoying the conversation, but we're going to take a little break and get a word from our sponsor. So the whole idea of a branding strategy sounded so exotic and so fancy to me. But after having several conversations with Neon, I now have a clearer understanding. I am sure of what my identity is, what it is that I want people to see Noreen Daily as. Thanks, Neon. Thanks, Splint. Visit them at wearesplint.com. You actually answered the next question I was going to ask, because I was going to ask if, if, if it is that we should adjust our style based on our relationship. But I'm going to tweak that slightly. Yeah. Is it that you adjust your style based on how important the relationship is? Oh, isn't that an interesting question? Yeah, I, you, often we are adjusting our style because of the investment we have in the relationship. We, like I do see that people who um, like in family relationships and marriages, um, those important workplace uh, relationships, people will sometimes work a little harder to flex their style mm -hmm. because there's such great risk if it doesn't get resolved. Um, I know that these skills can even work when you take your car in to get repaired. I actually had to shift my style. My style is not the competitive um, sort of uh, style. I tend to be more collaborative. And I went in years and years ago to get my car repaired. And I thought I was getting an oil change. And when I showed up to pick the car up, it was like $900. And I'm thinking, how did we get from the $47 special oil change to nine. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what happened here? <laughs> How did I get missed out of the loop? And so I went in very collaborative. Let's mm -hmm. explore the problem. Let's understand what happened. And, and they just kept saying, you know, no, you just owe us $900. And so my, my approach was not working. So I actually had to be less focused on that collaborative outcome and more focused on, I'm not actually prepared to pay $900 until I understand Wow. how this came to be and I, mm -hmm. I became a little bit more um 
a little bit more, I would say, assertive in my approach. And it, it, you know, it helped. I still ended up paying more than I wanted to because something did need fixing, but I didn't have to pay the whole amount. So, okay. so, so I could live with that outcome. But, you know, I didn't need to have a relationship at all with them. Right. I could have walked away and gone to the dealership down the street and I would have been okay with that. So for in that case, that's a great example of, um, you know, at, to your question, the, mm -hmm. the relationship wasn't important to me. The outcome was the the financial outcome, but not so much the relationship. Okay. But I wanted to adjust it because what I was doing was not working. <laughs> okay. As we're winding down, and you've said a lot, if it is that there's somebody who's listening and they're thinking, I'm, I'm listening to you ladies, but yet in the back of my mind, because of how I have always viewed conflict and mm. how conflict is, is something negative. You know, what is, is, is if, if they've got nothing else from the conversation, what is the, one of the things you'd like to leave with them regarding conflict resolution, how it is that they need to pay attention to their style because it can impact their relationships, whether negatively or positively. Yes, absolutely. And, ha and, and conflict resolution actually starts in our head. How we think about conflict resolution and conflict will shape how we show up, what we say and how we uh, deal with it. So if you can think about it instead of something that you're dreading or it's going to be awful, think about it as an opportunity to have an important conversation that can bring closure to something that has been stressful for you. So in, in essence, that courageous dialogue. So when you reframe it and when you add this piece, practice in advance. When you can just go in front of a mirror and practice what you would like to say to that other person without scripting what they're going to say because they never say what you, <laughs> what you want right. them to say. But when mm -hmm. you practice that, you build confidence and clarity so that when you get into the real conversation, there's far less drama and discomfort and, and more substance to the conversation. So that's what I would say around helping people in, in their next uh, difficult conversation. Think about it like courageous dialogue. Thank you so much. Excellent note to end on. Thank you. Thank you so much, Henry. This was Making It Last podcast. It's all about helping us to have better relationships, not just with ourselves, but with other people. I'm Noreen Daly. Until next time. Loving me, I loving you, mothers and fathers, husbands and wives, sisters and brothers, friends for life won't live in the past. All I wanna do now is making it last.